Next one is from Sack. Now this one, this one is complex. I think it's complex. Uh, desperately need some help on this complex for me challenge. Well, I don't blame you, Zach, because I think it is a little challenge too. Now, um, let's switch over here. That is now 3D printing. Uh, we don't need the, the piece hand here. I'll open up the next one. So Zach sent me an image. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is kind of cute. Uh, there you go. That's 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 awesome. You know, this is why I, I'm the same way, Zach. Uh, this is why I am using CAD and not drawing by hand. <laughs> so what we have is we have a cylinder, a cylinder. We have a Z channel in there that is kind of following a path, uh, an oblong path in here. But here's the tricky thing about this from Zach's perspective. And that is that this end here is thinner or thicker than the other half. Uh, this here is going to take a little bit of modeling up. And, and I hope that this is useful for you. Now, again, if there's some of you guys out there, when you see this video, if you have a better way to do this that would actually work, then, um, then I will definitely love uh, if you shoot me an email. Uh, but this is definitely not easy to do. You have a couple of different options, but because uh, to your point that that this is is different thickness in here in red, you're probably looking at using the loft command. And um, I would say that even if you're brand new, you should still watch this video just so you can see some of these tools that you maybe have never seen before. Yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's get into fusion, man. Let's start modeling uh, this part up here. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start with a cylinder. So I'm going to open up a sketch, see for circle, and um, let's make it 200 in diameter and O for offset to, uh, to do this here. Let's make it 10 millimeters thick. This doesn't really matter. I'm going to extrude this up. Up through here, let's make it 300 millimeters high. So here is our two, right? So again, if we're just looking quickly on Ryan's sketch. So on the inside of this two, we want this oblong channel uh, of kind of like a, um, I don't know what you call this, uh, C gripper or something like that. Like so it's going to snap into something. Okay. Um, let me just close something else down here. Okay, now what I would actually probably do right here is I am going to cut this tube in half and remove half of it. You can always mirror it back in the end. Um, and I'm going to show you just in a second why I'm going to do that because I am going to select this and I'm going to split it with the plane here. Okay, and then I'm going to remove one of these bodies. And the reason I'm going to do that is the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make that oval. So I'm going to open up a sketch and uh, open up this sketch here. And uh, then I'm going to draw up an oval and uh, this is going to be an ellipse. And I'm just going to draw an ellipse up here, draw something that looks like that maybe. And let's just fully define this. Normally I don't like to fully define things on these, uh, these ones, but this is a little bit complex. So I want to make sure that we get this about right. So let's make this 75 and maybe make this um, 120. It doesn't really matter. And I'm also going to go ahead and make this 150. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make an offset of this oval and bring that out. And I'm going to make that 10 millimeters. What we so what we have now is we kind of have this oval sitting here now, and this is what was the reason that I am going to um, that I'm going to do this. Um, I cut this pipe in half. It's because I'm actually going to project this shape over on this face, but because I'm going to do a a loft um, on here between these. I actually don't want this to be continuously all the way around because it would actually, it would actually screw things up. What this, 
um, what this oval is going to be is it's going to be our rails for our shape. And I would actually probably only do a fourth of it. So what I'm going to do is still inside of that oval shape. I am going to create a line and I'm going to close a line from here from this end point here to this end point and from this area here to here. And then I'm going to trim uh, this. This is a command I'm not using very often. I'm actually going to trim half of this oval away. So we're just ending up with some of this. Now I just killed my fully defined and you can read that mentioning it again. I'm going to not go for that. Here comes the first tool that I don't know if we have used ever on uh, on these as glass line. Uh, we're going to open up a sketch on this front face. Doesn't really matter. We're going to go in and we're going to do a project to surface command. So we're going to select that face we wanted. So this is why we had to cut the pipe in half. We're going to select the curves. That's going to be these two curves here. Um, now it's hard to see because everything is blue. Those two curves right there. And then instead of saying to closest point, I'm actually going to control along a vector. So I want to bring it along this axis right here. And now you see that that appears in there. I'm going to hit OK. And now that, that um, oblong section there has now been projected over to there. Okay, uh, we can turn sketches off and we don't need them anymore, but we do need this one here. Now, these two um, curves are going to be lofted rails. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sketching um, on, on two planes. So I'm going to start out with, I'm going to finish the sketch. This sketch is done here. And it can actually be an, a good trick is to right click these. And I'm going to just rename this to be called Rails. And the reason I'm doing that is now when you hover over and you see it says Rails down there versus just Sketch 2. Just make it a little bit easier to find things. I'm going to create a uh, offset plane that is on the midpoint. So that's 150 up. That will be right where those points are. And uh, I'm going to open up a sketch on that here. And I'm going to rotate it around up here. And uh, I'm going to draw a, uh, a center rectangle. And this is maybe not the best way to do this, but I'm going to do it this way anyways. Um, and I'm going to make sure that this is passing through those points. And I'm actually also going to make sure that it's crossing into our solid. That's important. So I'm actually going to hit D for dimension. And I'm going to make a point from here to here and make sure that this is overlapping. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that I want to dimension from here to here. And I'm going to make sure this is, we're going to make that 10 millimeters. Now, what I'm going to make is now is the C channel that we have. So I'm going to do that C channel that, um, that Zach wants through here. And then I'm actually going to draw up. Out of that C channel, I'll go like this. I'm only going to do half of it. This is hopefully one of those that you're going to learn from. So I'm just not right now. I'm just coming up with some some numbers here. Three point five. I had to practice this one before we did this one, and I'm going to make sure this one is ten. So remember, remember this ten millimeter, because that was what. One of the things that uh, that Zach pointed out that there was going to be a different thickness. Now I'm going to just take and I'm going to use the mirror command and I'm going to mirror these edges over this line so I didn't have to draw it all up. Okay, that's my first that's my first profile. My next profile, so that's sitting up there on top. My next profile is going to be another sketch. And it's going to be on this plane. Now I'm going to use this slice command over here. 
This should be a slicing through here. And I'm going to do the kind of the same thing you just told me to do. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to make sure that it intersects with our guide rail. And I'm also going to make sure that there's a dimension here. So I'm making sure that it's oversecting. Then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to make this one sticking out 10 millimeters. And I'm now going to do what I did before by driving a center line like that. And uh, I'm going to draw up half of it again. Now what I'm going to do different on this one is I'm going to make this one 8 instead of 10. Okay, so that's the difference. Now I'm going to make the rest of them the same. 1.5. This one was 2. And this one here was 3.5. And then I'm going to do what you saw me do before. I'm just going to mirror this entities over this one. Okay. So what we have now, finish the sketch. So what we have now is we're going to do a loft on this one to this one, but then we're going to use these as the guiding rails. And that is really to hold this solid in place. I don't, now, if you wanted, you, you might need to then also do this, then you could do one on the other side that, you know, could be, a different maybe this one next one is six right and and then it could kind of like go around um i hope that makes sense but i'm gonna go in now and do a loft and i'm gonna select this and this is one i'm gonna select this whoops i don't mind make sure i select the right profile Oh, why is, hang on. There's something over that profile. That profile is not right. That sketch, why would that not be in the closed profile? Look at this. Isn't that typical? See how I messed up this year? I didn't close that. This is the things that makes... That was a sketching error on my part. All right. Loft. This section, that's the 10 millimeter. Two, this section here, zoom in. That's the eight millimeters. Now I'm gonna, it comes out as a cut. I'm gonna make it a join. Now notice what it does right here is it just does a straight loft from that shape to that shape, boom. This is where we come in with the guide rails. Um, and we really need the guide rails on both sides to do this. Uh, that's extremely important. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pull it with one guide rail, like here, one guide rail on the outside now that might you might think oh that looks good but if you're zooming in here you can see that it's not following the other guide rail uh that shape so we're gonna have to select that one also and then the shape goes ahead there and, and get that in there hit okay and now we have uh that shape uh in there now I this makes sense that we did it in half sections like this. We could now, um, so this was 10, we could now make one over here where we use guide rails again, uh, and we could do that. It could also be, and I don't know what you're, what you're kind of looking for here, um, Zach, but you could also, of course, we could just uh, go now and do a mirror of features. And if we did this right, we should be able to mirror all this over like this.
and make sure you check up here to see that it's still one body that means that it's a, a fully body and now we actually have a development that's gonna go right now from 10 to 8 from 8 to 10 from 10 to 8 and 8 to 10 right that is kind of what is kind of cool oh and then I would start adding my fillets now in the end but know that um, know that uh, that that would will, will take some time to, to calculate um, that is, is is one way to do this is how I would do that and then of course um, you know this last shape if it's you probably don't want it to be uh, so we could say mirror yeah, you can mirror this feature so I'm gonna select that over there okay and then we could combine these two join them together okay and then you kind of have that um, that cylinder there with that shape that's how I would do it uh, this was a I think was a pretty complex one I would love to know how you would do this found this helpful Thumbs up if you thought this was stupid. Thumbs down. And again, if you have a better way to do this, um, you know, one way could probably maybe try to build it out of surfaces would maybe be, a, this is the best way I could come up with. Hope you found this useful.